वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू योर सोशल साइंस क्लास वी वर डूइंग हिस्ट्री चैप्टर टू रीजनल किंगडम्स वन एंड दिस विल बी वीडियो नंबर फोर ओके सो लेट्स बिगिन विद दिस टॉपिक नाउ इन रीजनल किंगडम वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द पावरफुल रूलर्स इन द नॉर्थ हु वर द पावरफुल रूलर्स इन द नॉर्थ दे वर राजपूत गजनावेद घोरेद पालाज एंड द गुर्जरा प्रतिहारा यू ऑल रिमेंबर दैट देन वी मूव टू डेकिन इन डेकिन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट राष्ट्रकुटाज एंड देन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट सम मोर स्मॉल किंगडम्स क्लियर दिस ऑल यू रिमेंबर नाउ टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट साउथ इंडिया See, when we talk about South, the major, the powerful kingdoms of the South were Pallavas, Pandyas, and Cholas. In short, if we talk about them, you all have studied in class six. You may find these names very familiar because you already have discussed this in class six. Now, starting with South India, we will be doing. Pallavas first. They were very powerful in the seventh and eighth century. Their capital city was Kachi. Now these Pallava rulers, they had built many temples also during their time period when they were ruling. They had built many beautiful temples which were made of stone. But in ninth century. Cholas defeated Pallavas, and this way their rule came to an end. Clear about Pallavas? What did we study in Pallavas? First of all, they were very powerful in seventh and eighth century. Their capital was Kanchi. Then they had built many temples during their time period, which were made of stone. But in the ninth century, Cholas defeated them. and ended their rule this was the end of pallavas next we will talk about pandyas see pandyas they ruled the region which is present day madurai madurai was their capital also it was an important center of learning also you remember when we started history when i told you that everything in history every kingdom they carry some sources of information otherwise how would we know about them so parco polo who was one foreign traveler he visited pandyas during uh, he visited this pandyan kingdom and from there only we came to know about this region because he had left a detailed account of his visit this kingdom also declined in the 14th century clear where did pandyas rule they ruled around region that is present day madurai madurai was their capital also madurai was an important center of learning also clear and this kingdom declined in the 14th century now next is chola the cholas they established themselves as a very powerful empire in south india that is why they were also known as imperial cholas imperial means magnificent they were known as magnificent cholas they ruled in south india for nearly 4 centuries okay for around 4 centuries they had ruled in south india they were very powerful here The first Chola ruler was Vijay Alya, who ruled from eight forty six to eight seventy one. He ruled which region? North of River Kaveri. Now the two powerful rulers in the Cholas were Raja Raja Chola and Rajendra Chola, who made Cholas the greatest power in South India. Here they both had worked. enormously they had worked like they had given their 100% they were full dedicated towards their empire they were very powerful 
who made who in, in made these cholas empire who took this cholas empire to the next level okay who were those two rulers raja raja chola and rajendra chola so first is raja raja chola raja raja chola he ruled from 985 to 1016 okay he was also known as raja raja 1 he was a brilliant commander he defeated pandyas he defeated cheras he also built a strong navy so that he could control trade along the coastal areas and with the help of this strong navy only he captured parts of sri lanka and maldives island clear about raja raja chola what was his time period he ruled from 985 to 1016 he was also known as raja raja 1 he was a brilliant commander whom he defeated he defeated pandyas he defeated cheras he also built a strong navy so that he can control along the coastal areas and his navy his fleet they captured parts of sri lanka and the maldives island clear now next we move to rajendra chola rajendra chola he ruled from 1016 to 1044 he was raja raja tan he was the successor of raja raja chola he made the empire even more powerful to whom he defeated he defeated cheras he defeated chalukyas then he defeated palas after defeating all these places after defeating all of them he named himself gangai konda chola remember that he named himself gangai konda chola gangai konda chil chola means one who has conquered places up to river ganga clear because he had captured all these places that, that was uh, like up to river ganga therefore he named himself gangai konda chola clear why did he call himself gangai chonda gangai konda chola because he had conquered places up to the river ganga okay then after that he built a new capital near tanjore which was known as gangai konda chola pura okay now when we see the meaning of this word gangai means river ganga okay konda means which was brought chola means cholas and pura means city okay now this was all about the places he defeated but one of the most important campaign that he did was in south east asia what did he do there you know south east asia it was basically popular within indian merchants for trading they were doing trading with various parts of south east asia and southern china now when they had to do trade they had to pass ships through the straits of molokka but that area it was controlled by the kingdom of shri vijaya so shri vijaya did not allow them to go through that area so these merchants they went to rajendra chola to help for help and many of these merchants were from the chola kingdom only so what rajendra chola did he sent his fleet fleet is a group of ships which are sailing together okay so he sent his fleet and defeated shri vijaya king now after he defeated them there was no problem so trade went on smoothly and because of this trade only the chola kingdom became very wealthy understood understood this campaign okay now this chola kingdom was very wealthy but successors of rajendra chola they were involved in continuous fight with the neighboring kingdom now when they were involved in continuous fight it depleted the treasury i have already told you many times that when he, when any king 
he is continuously involved in wars with different different kingdoms it will require a lot of money money because he had to maintain that army he had to get all those tools all those necessary equipments for war it will definitely require money when he will spend all these money only in war what will be left in the kingdom so this continuous war it depleted the treasury and weakened the chola power considerably okay chola power then this empire declined by the 13th century understood i am telling you once again please listen first of all raja rajendra chola he was raja raja's son who became his successor he made the empire even more powerful he defeated cheras chalukyas and also defeated palas after this victory only he named himself gangai konda chola gangai konda chola means why did he named himself gangai konda chola because gangai konda chola means one who has conquered places up to river ganga and he had already conquered all those places apart from this one of the most important campaign of rajendra chola was in south east asia because there were many merchants who were doing trade with south east asia they were not allowed by sri vijaya to pass their ships from the straits of molokka since they were not allowed to pass their ships the merchants they went to rajendra chola for help after this rajendra chola he sent his fleet and defeated shri vijaya king which made the trade go on smoothly this trade only flourished the empire this trade made the empire very wealthy but the successors of rajendra chola they were continuously involved in war okay and due to that the wealth whichever they had it depleted and weakened the chola power marking the end of the cholas in the 13th century clear clear about rajendra chola now now we will be doing a short assignment based on today's video question number 1 name the three powerful kingdoms in the south you only have to name those three kingdoms question number 2 write in brief about the campaign of rajendra chola in southeast asia i have just explained you what he did in southeast asia when people <coughs> sorry went to him for help when they were not allowed to do trade when they were not allowed to pass through the straits of molokka by shri vijaya that entire campaign you have to explain in this question question number 3 why did rajendra chola called himself gangai konda chola this also have been explained to you please go through the video for reference you will get all these answers you have to write these answers clear we are done with the now all the three major kingdoms we will be discussing about the cultural achievements of cholas administration of cholas in my next video till then please take care of yourself do complete your assignments on time do go through the videos on a regular basis take care